Hi there. Today, external control options for your DAW. This is a lengthy video because it's full of information. I'm going to talk about what I use, why I use it, what I considered, and why I didn't select those other items that I considered. First, a good analogy. The PC is not the best computer, I'm sorry. The Mac, on the other hand, is not the best computer. The best computer is the one you like, the one that works for you. It's probably the one that you started with and are familiar with. But you may have changed from PC to Mac or Mac to PC, and that's your choice. I'm very pragmatic when it comes to getting work done. A doll, sample libraries, and hardware synthesizers are just some of the tools we all use. A tool has to enhance my workflow in some way for me to consider using it. It can make my life more creative by providing me sounds I didn't have, like a new sample library. It can make me more productive by providing enhancements to my workflow. And that is what I'm talking about in this video. First, let me tell you what I considered and what I purchased, and then we'll get into the details of why and why not. This may help you decide if you want to spend any more of your valuable time watching this episode. By considering, I mean I did considerable research before buying or rejecting the product. I considered the Stream Deck Mini, the Stream Deck XL, the Stream Deck Studio, the Stream Deck Mark II, the Loop Deck Live, Loop Deck CT, Touch Portal, Touch OSC. I purchased a Stream Deck XL, Touch Portal, and Touch OSC. I primarily use the Stream Deck XL and Touch Portal. Let's start with what I considered, but I didn't buy or use. First, Touch OSC. I downloaded this program, but I don't use it. It was relatively affordable, $11.99. There is a NAG screen telling you to buy a license, and that license costs $24. The NAG screen comes up a lot, so if you decide to use the product, you'll need to buy a license. Remember, pragmatism. This is supposed to be a productivity tool. If you're constantly interrupted with a NAG screen, that will reduce your productivity. When it comes to a level of custom control, I don't know of another software product that is better or more comprehensive in this regard. The issue with Touch OSC is that the level of custom control comes with a lot of baggage. That baggage is the enormous front end time to create custom surface controls. I'm talking about hours, days, lots of hours and lots of days, and there is a steep learning curve to the surface control design software. Here's what you are balancing. On one end of the software product scale, you have easy to learn, quick to set up, some customization. On the other end of the scale, you have a steep learning curve, slow to set up, but a high level of custom control. There are some free control panels with OSC, and there are also some that you can buy from vendors. On a positive note, Touch OSC includes a program called Protocol, where the C in Protocol is spelt with a K. This program will display, among other things, the MIDI messages being sent to and from devices. It's an absolute necessity if you're using Touch OSC. When you are trying to troubleshoot issues and messages, you'll need this product. It's also great for other uses, like when you are using other control services and you want to track down sources or issues. Best of all, it's free and there's no nag screen. Hopefully they won't change that now I've mentioned it. If you're looking for a high level of custom control, you don't mind the steep learning curve and you have days or even weeks to spend creating each panel, Touch OSC could be for you. It wasn't for me. Next, Stream Deck Mini, Stream Deck Studio, and Stream Deck 
Mark II. I'm going to handle all of these together at once. If the Stream Deck XL I purchased and use is any indication, these are probably fine products. The issue for me is simple, not enough buttons and rotary controllers. For people that don't need a lot of buttons, they would be fine. I understand that I could purchase multiple units, but that gets spendy. It's certainly more than some of the other options I'll be discussing later. Next up, Loop Deck CT. When I was looking at the Loop Deck CT, it was several years ago, close to when they first introduced it, and the software was in its infancy. I went looking on Amazon and anywhere I could for good reviews because I was torn between the Loop Deck CT and the Stream Deck XL. The initial reviews weren't great for the Loop Deck CT. I couldn't find any detailed reviews that were significantly positive and there were many that were negative. At the time I'm writing this, I looked on Amazon. Loop Deck CT has a 63% approval rating at five stars on Amazon. Stream Deck XL has a 90% five star rating. There is also a big difference in price. Loop Deck is $550 when it's not on sale. Stream Deck XL is $250. Despite all this, I wasn't deterred. The Loop Deck has buttons and knobs. It just seemed logical that the Loop Deck would be a better option for me as a composer than the Stream Deck XL. Also, Loop Deck interfaces with Cubase at the API level. That's Application Program Interface. So that should make it a higher level control and specifically you could go beyond the control that you would normally get with shortcuts. It should also make the performance more snappy, meaning a better response time. I chased my tail for six months trying to talk myself into buying a loop deck. Ultimately, I pulled the trigger, but it wasn't on the loop deck. It was on the next product I'm going to talk about. Next up, one of the two items I did purchase and use daily. Stream Deck XL. I purchased it. I plugged it in. I didn't read the manual. I'm a guy. I don't ask for directions either. <laughs> it was a joy to set up and it's so easy to use. I was up and running in minutes, not hours or days. Yes, I spent some time figuring out what actions to put on the Stream Deck to optimize my workflow in Cubase. And I went through a few iterations of making changes, but it was easy and best of all, it worked flawlessly. No freezes, no crashes, just plain joy. I also spent a few hours creating custom icons. A lot of icons are supplied with the unit, so you don't have to do that. I just like familiar visuals, so I created a custom set of my own icons. The addition of some knobs might be useful, but I'm very happy. There are a lot of custom modules that people have created and they make them available for free. For example, the ability to send MIDI commands is one of them, so you can do key switching and more. This was a great purchase for me, and I highly recommend the Stream Deck XL for use with Cubase. Next, the second of the two items I purchased and use daily, Touch Portal. I downloaded and installed the program to my PC. I purchased the app on iTunes and installed it on all my iOS devices. You only pay once for the license and then it's good for all devices connected to that account. There's an Android version if you need it. Be aware that if you use both Android and iOS devices, you'll need to purchase a license for each platform. A license for the Pro version is $13.99. You can download the free version and get an idea of what it's capable of, but you are limited to how many pages of icons you can create and how many icons per page you can have. Setup was easy. Whenever you're dealing with a wireless device connected to a computer, it's possible to have firewall and other connection issues, but it was seamless for me. I was able to use all the custom icons I made for the Stream Deck XL on Touch Portal. 
That way I have identical items on both units. It makes sense. The Pro version gives you unlimited pages and a maximum of 110 icons per page. I've always wanted more icons. 110 icons is certainly more than the 32 that you get with Stream Deck XL, but I feel that 180 would be good and 240 would be better. There's certainly room for it on a large device like an iPad Pro. I create a lot of macros and other panels and each one takes up an icon. Recently, version 4 was released and now it's possible to use multiple iOS devices with one PC. It's not as inexpensive as just having more icons. I'm currently trying to purchase another iPad Pro off of eBay. Just like the Stream Deck, it is possible to use add-in modules, and I'm using a MIDI add-in module to create control surfaces for some of my sample libraries and virtual synths. Generally, the add-in modules are free. You download them from the main Touch Portal website. The setup interface looks very similar to Stream Deck and works very much the same way. There are a couple of quirks to learn, but if you've set up a Stream Deck, the basic setup on Touch Portal will be a breeze. I'm going to go off script a little bit here. When the company moved from version 3 to version 4, and I just upgraded recently before I made this video, it changed the requirements from needing iOS 9.3 to iOS 12, meaning that one of my old iPads won't work with it anymore because it maxes out at version 9.3. You should know that going in. If you're going to use multiple devices, you're going to have to use iOS 12, and so you're going to need a device that supports that. Okay, back on script. I use both the Stream Deck XL and Touch Portal at the same time. I don't want to talk in terms of pros and cons because I like both devices. What I'll say is that each one has advantages. Stream Deck has haptic feedback in that you press a physical key and you can feel the key giving way to your touch. Touch Portal has more buttons and it's more affordable. Ultimately, I'd like to say this. If I'd been given both devices and I could have kept only one, it would be Touch Portal because I like the instant access to more buttons and I still need even more, hint, hint. That being said, I don't regret buying the Stream Deck XL first. When I'm doing a lot of editing and composing, my fingers instinctively move to the Stream Deck XL as I like the feel of the buttons for those constant start, stop, record transport functions. I'll use Touch Portal for my custom macros, device panels, and other functions. If you're on a budget and you already own a device that will run the current version of Touch Portal, that's a great way to go. For under $100, you can buy a 9.7 inch iPad that will run iOS 12, and then you need to spend $13.99 for the pro version of Touch Portal. It's a reasonably priced option. In this episode, I showed you pictures of my iPhone 6S Plus running Touch Portal with 104 icons. I also showed it with fewer icons. Sure, the buttons are pretty tiny when there's 104 of them on a small iPhone, but it's actually pretty usable. You'd be surprised, and you can always opt for fewer icons that are larger. One last thing about Touch Portal. Your $13.99 gets you a perpetual pro license. There are upgrades though beyond purchasing the pro version. Using multiple devices with one PC is an upgrade. It cost me $6.99. There is an icon editor option and that's also an upgrade. I have Photoshop so it's not something I need but if you need it it's there. There are also some other graphics upgrades. One of them is Edge Graphics. I don't have it, so I don't know exactly what it is, but I think it allows you to have icons around the edge, around the borders. There's also an RGB upgrade. 
to make things look bright and kind of fluorescent-y, maybe like neon, I guess would be a good way to describe it. And then there's also a retro graphics option. I don't have them, so I can't give you any more details, but you can look at them on the website. Hopefully I haven't wasted your time. Take care, and I'll be back in another episode soon.